Hi. 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 How you doing? Hi. 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 How are you? Okay. I, it, I'm glad. I'm, it's nice to be needed. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, the uh, the reason why a disgruntled employee can take classified document home, documents home and stash them for a little while and not get in the same trouble as everyone else is because everybody else wants the company to be there the next day. Right. And so okay. we're having to tiptoe in a way that we never have had to before. Um, and because he's so stupid about it that he might, in a fit, just throw things in the air yes. at an event or something. Like, it's that bad. It's one of those things where you're, we're talking. Right. They're in the, they, the well, if you look at this, I just mentioned this uh, to you before we went on the air, but this NARA letter that they put up, uh, the National Archives letter that they gave up to his five-page letter, them responding to him, his magical privilege mm -hmm. idea that he was just automatically declaring p previous privilege to everything and all the boxes and all of his houses that and they wrote this letter back going yeah dude that's not how it works dummy you lost and the new guy gets to de decide what's privileged and what ain't he also gets to decide yeah. the new president what documents can leave and which ones have to come back because he's got to make real decisions about real life stuff right now. Yeah. And he needs to know what you've been talking about and to whom. And if you're hiding those documents, you are right. you are effectively shortchanging well, the United States in negotiations. This is what I was mentioning earlier, Hal, that Michael Cohen says Trump may have stolen our top secret documents to extort America by using them as a get out of jail free card. Mm -hmm. Trump's mindset may have been if you incarcerate me, these documents are going to be released to Iran, North Korea, Russia or China. I mean, yeah. yes, he is and always has been an ongoing threat to America. Now, now watch watch for the MAGA response to the fact that when we finally see what some of these documents are we find out that a lot of them were dummies given to him by the the intelligence community because they knew he was a threat so they started feeding him false information like he was some sort like a double agent they caught in the in world war ii like we're on to him but don't let him know we're on to him start Start handing him kids' drawings that look like uh, where the tanks are poised before D-Day. You know, they, they right. do that kind of stuff. I wouldn't be surprised if we read it all and we're like, nobody really th thought this. He thought this was real. You know, <laughs> right. fingers crossed. I always thought they gave him like a Fisher-Price nuclear code, something that was just, yes, That's this right. is it. Um, they gave him a speak and spell. So it sounds just like me. It sounds <laughs> just like me. <laughs> it's a Trump and say. Um, mm -hmm. you, yes, you referenced this story, uh, self-inflicted wound, Trump's de de release of damning National Archives letter blows up in his face. Trump's team thought the letter would help their case. Legal experts say it did the opposite. So <laughs> explain what this is, because it, all right, Trump, so this what does been... Bob Sesco always say, which is you, if you get you wet and feed you after midnight, Bob Sesco. That's, but that's true. <laughs> he said Trump always makes things worse for Trump, right? Yeah. Yeah. Count on it. Yeah. I, that's why I really don't fret a ton of this stuff because he can't even screw up well. So even if he meant to sell the documents, he was probably holding out for more money because he's so broke. So he never went through the process. My, my fear with those documents is not that he was selling the documents themselves, but simply access to them. Pay me, you can come and spend a little time alone in the room with them. Um, think uh, Epstein and a local teenager. And that's the, you know, and. Dershowitz. Um, it, that's he took that kind of strategy. This NARA letter. So this is this this stuff has been going on for a year and a half. Like they knew within thirty days that he had left with documents he was not supposed to take, and it was a red siren moment everywhere. And so they've been negotiating for a year. That like we, I, I guarantee there have been FBI and Secret Service that aren't on his detail and others watching Mar-a-Lago logging every person who goes in and out for the last year and a half because they got to know if this stuff goes in the wind where it went and they can't get to it without something as brash as, as serving a search and seizure warrant because it was again wasn't just a search warrant they knew what was there it was a search and seizure warrant they were getting back yeah. things that did not belong to them so the NARA document came in May I believe and it was he had he had given them 15 boxes in ja in January after a year of negotiation and then basically having to threaten him like you can't have this stuff. And when they got the boxes back, 
it didn't just have classified stuff in it. It didn't just have top secret stuff in it. It didn't just have SCIF stuff in it. It had SAP documents in it. Special access privilege, the absolute highest form of top secret that we have in this country. Yeah. And he had it in a storage closet with one of those pinhole locks like you have on a bathroom to make sure your kid can't lock themselves in there yes. by accident. Yeah. And then that, that it was still in that room till May or June, mid-June, when they said, could you please at least put a, a lock on there? And they meant deadbolt. He meant padlock. They put a padlock on it. Now, I have yet to be convinced that they closed the padlock. I, I, I think they just hung it there. And, like, people think the gate is locked. You know that trick? Right. That's what I think they did. So, so 